everybody. Welcome to Gamble Live today, Saturday, May 16th. Today we are celebrating graduates. How's everybody doing today? Vicki, you doing okay? Just peachy. <laughs> Thanks for filling in for our video person today. Everybody's working, so it's Vicki and I here at the shop today. We are in the front part of the shop where we do most of our t-shirt quilting. This is more of our sweatshop area. So today we're going to be talking about t-shirt quilting. There's been a lot of questions about it and everybody's been busy making them. So we're going to try and talk through a few different processes that we do here for our t-shirt quilts. So first of all, i got to take off these glasses. They're my daughter's and I can't see with them because I don't wear glasses. So that's a little bit more my style. So thanks for checking in with us. So um, does anybody have any questions before we get started about things I should cover, things that they're looking for to get covered for t-shirt quilting. I would like to say thank you for commenting. I posted a couple things. We did have a couple people that knew what we were going to talk about just because they kind of guessed. Somebody thought maybe a baby was coming. Somebody thought maybe it was a wedding. So there's all kinds of great things going on. So we hope you're staying safe and um, keeping quilting. So we're going to get to it. So I'm going to have Vicki go to the back wall, just kind of give you a, a glance of what we have going on here at the shop. We have a lot of different quilts in progress here at the shop and at our own homes. So when it comes to t-shirt quilting, there's really no rules. You got to do what works for you. And what t-shirts you're given because we all know t-shirts come in several different sizes and there's several different fabrics so as long as you get it stabilized you'll be good to go and your quilting will turn out beautiful i see a couple things did fall off the wall here so we'll just get that fixed real quick and we also have one pinned on ready to be quilted right behind us um, this machine, this is this um, Elevate. So Vicki's being real careful with her filming, so I appreciate that. So you can see this t-shirt quilt has lots of heavy pieces. There's some embroidery on it. And down here further, you can't really see it, but there is some um, different areas that have um, gems and such. But our gamble goes right through it, and we usually don't have any problem quilting them. So when we first start our t-shirt quilts, we get them all in, and we'll just start a bin with the person's name on it. We just tag them, and we start cutting them up. So our team here is um, the pair Govs, and most of our t-shirts we get in for those are black and um, green. So sometimes there's not a whole lot of color, so they get kind of boring for the guys. The girls were bringing lots of fun colored t-shirts. Once you cut them to a certain size to start using them, I use um, Pellon 906F. It is my favorite um, fusible. It's lightweight, it's not really heavy, and it quilts really nice. I know there's a lot of brands out there that people do use, but it is not my brand of choice. So this is, if you want to get a shot of this, I think do I have that right? It's the Pellon 906F, and it's only $2.50 a yard. So you can really be very, um, you can use it quite a bit and not have to worry about the cost. Because sometimes you, the, your interfacing will add $25 or so to your quilt. So we just kind of iron that to the back of your t-shirts, get a nice press seam on it, and then we just lay them up on the board in, in a pleasing manner. So sometimes we piece the blocks. You can see on some of them, um, there's different areas that get pieced. Some that have different sections. Like this one will be pieced. That one will be pieced. We'll take these four smaller ones that will make a block by itself. We'll add sashing to some of these others. There's also a section here that we've pieced some of the t-shirt fabric together and made our own little strip there. And then we've done it here again for another piece. So we can use the t-shirt fabric as part of our blocks. 
There's a lot of different ways. There's just no rules. When I start out, I usually start off with a two, like a two and a half inch strip to keep everything a little basic. I will do either like a 12 and a half inch square to start or a 15 and a half inch square to kind of give myself that same rule of thumb. And then kind of lay them up on the board and then just kind of piece them in. I know there are some people that will do them all in a row and if that works for you, I say go for it. But you can see some t-shirts are awful big and some are very tiny. So it's trying to get that balance of what you want and what the person who you're making it for prefers. Now this is my daughter's quilt. She graduated last year. So she's got lots of different t-shirts in here. Of course she went on the Gamble Cruise with us so I had to throw that one in there. But you don't always have to use graduation shirts. You can play with them a little bit. This is the shirt from when she was younger. She liked to have tags on her shirt so that's an old Barbie shirt. Here's a pair of her jeans that we threw in there. And there's also another square down here that has tags on it from her clothes. So you can think outside the box and use whatever you want. Now we always like to put Minky on the back of our t-shirt quilts because it just quilts up beautiful. So that's what we like to use. You can always use your cotton fabric and um, cotton batting if you prefer. But I like to use the Quilters Dream Puff with Minky because it just gives it that nice feel. And I've got some of that here. It is a little lofty, but what I like about it is that when you quilt it, it quilts up really nice and we mostly use solids, so you really get that quilting design to pop. So when I quilt, I will um, use my minky and I'll use my puff batting and my t-shirt quilt. And then I usually will use a size 5 gross Beckert needle because that's going to help you go through all those layers. Okay, I have a couple questions. A couple questions, okay. Do you piece the minky? I do piece the minky if I need to. We do sell it here that 60 wide, and there's also 90 wide available. So as you can see up on the board, Vicki has some barriers, and she knows exactly what size her quilt is going to be if she stays within those boundaries. So her, that, I think that middle quilt is going to be 90 wide. So she knows that if she goes any wider, she's going to have to do it bigger. And you want to make sure when you piece your minky that you piece your nap going in the right direction. If you don't, you're going to have them two going in two different directions, and that's not good. So you can see it goes one way, and then it goes the other way. If I was to piece this, your nap would be backwards. And that's not good. So I always make sure when I um, piece it to make sure you get the nap going in the right direction. And I also know there's some controversy over how you pin it on your long arm. I like to pin my salvages to the leaders because I've got a nice edge to pin to. And I know there's talk of stretch, and, but I think you need to use the, your own common sense on how you quilt. I had to pin one on yesterday because it was a directional fabric and it was very hard to pin these curly edges. So I do prefer to pin the selvage to the leaders. So that's my personal preference. And I just make sure that I, when I roll it, I do prefer to have a, a little bit more taut quilt. So if we look at this quilt over here, you can see I've got this kind of tight. And I know there will be some quilters that say no, they don't like it like that. But for how I quilt, this works for me. This one actually just has a thin um, cotton backing and it has a thin cotton batting and then you see all the other quilting here. But I like it to be a little bit tighter when I quilt and again my size 5 needle will go right through it and I usually do not have any problems. Any other questions? Question about where do you order your Minky from? Um, we sell it here at the shop. Um, we use Shannon Cuddle number 3. Usually, that's our, our preference. Um, we have a wide variety of mostly solids, but we do carry some others. But you can get it other places as well. But I like the brand of Cuddle by Shannon because it is a better quality. I know there are some um, cheaper ones out there, but I like to use quality products, so that's what I stick with.
How much do we charge to make the quilts? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> there are, you can actually Google, um, there are some people that do post their prices online. Some of them go by t-shirts, some of them go by size, some of them have different price range. I actually, our, our starting price here is four fifty, and that is for a basic, um, maybe twin size maybe 55, 59 by 72 approximately. And it varies, it depends on how many t-shirts the customer brings and how much actual piecing has to be done. But that is a starting price because it's also a designing process. We spend a lot of time playing with the t-shirts and putting them in the right direction and switching them around. And there's some times that we will even turn them on the side. I don't see, oh, this, um, one doesn't have... this one actually here doesn't have a whole, oh, there's a couple that, because sometimes just trying to get them in the right direction without a lot of gaps is really hard. So I figure I spend a lot of time between consulting with the customer, picking the sashing, doing the shopping, and all the other things that go with it. I, I don't touch a quilt for under 450. And that's a, this one's a 450 quilt. And that will be done, and that includes all the fabrics, the quilting process, the binding, and everything. If they want to bring fabrics in because they choose to use their own, that we certainly work with them on every step of the way. We always encourage them to actually do a lot of their own piecing and cutting of the t-shirts because that takes a lot of time. Just the ironing process, making sure it gets that stabilizer on the um, t-shirts as well. What about thread? Which thread do you like to use? I like to use Isacord embroidery thread because it's shiny and pretty. I concur with Vicki. We do use the Isocord thread here. Superior makes great threads. Um, again, that's a debatable topic. There are so many different threads out there for your machine, for whatever your process is. You have to find the right balance. There's also um, things for your bobbin. There's batting differences. There's backing differences. So you have to find the right balance of all your components that work for you. So. I just, I find that I don't have as much dust as well with the Isocord, but that's just my, my personal preference. Okay, what about binding? I do all kinds of different binding. We do um, the cotton binding. We usually will do a two and a half inch, two, excuse me, two and a quarter strip, and we'll ta hand tack it. Or else on this one here, we've got it that it's also, we'll use minky binding. So this one was just done by machine. And when you use Minky, it covers up quite a bit. This one is just kind of a fun um, fur binding that they had, so you really can't even see it. It gets sewn on, and then it gets sewn on at the top. This one was sewn to the back, and then flipped over to the front and sewn down. But there's again, there's no rules. It depends on my project. It depends on what I'm trying to achieve. If you change the texture of your fabrics, it doesn't always have to match. Now my daughter wanted to have burgundy on the back and gray on the front, and it was hard to balance the two colors because there's no burgundy on the front. <laughs> so I was able to just put the, the gray binding and I changed the texture, so it just kind of makes it look like maybe that's the way it was meant to be. Sometimes um, a stripe is really good, so that's kind of fun to put on it. And again, just no rules. It depends on the customer and what they're asking for. Some people don't want to have a whole lot going on here, but sometimes it's fun to see a lot going in here because like on the one on the wall, it really pops all those colors out. Especially, this is a, a gentleman's quilt. And well, I took the couple blocks down, but this pink block is going in here too. This is one of his blocks. So having a fun color for your sashing really kind of makes it um, pull it all together and then when you pull your binding in that that pulls it all together too so there is a lot of design time that goes in with the t-shirt quilt these are not just cut 12 and a half inch and sew them together and be done and put a big x in it they all get specialty quilting we love our gambles we love our statlers so we've got a lot of designs to choose from um, we have one more binding question do we cut the minky binding the same size as the cotton binding when I do binding by Minky, I will use a two inch strip. Now there are, if you go to the Shannon website, I believe they do have instructions for doing Minky binding. And actually if you um, 
private message me. I'll be glad to um, let you know or I send you the copy of what we have. You can do it by hand, but again, you can do it uh, by machine. They have a lot of free patterns as well. Okay, now how about the quilting design, if the customer doesn't have a preference? Um, I try and make it um, as personal as I can. Most of the people that um, come to us now kind of know that we have um, the computerized machines because we have the elevator up front and we have the Statler in the back, so just about any design is out there. So a lot of them, if they're going to be a sports one, we may go with footballs. Um, on this one, it may be... Um, I don't know. This is not mine. Do you have an idea on this one? Not a clue. Um, this one over here. This. I thought I turned that off. Um, so there's dance ones. And a lot of times I will tell my customers to go online and find the design that they want. I open that up to them because I could spend hours searching for a design. But because of the pattern cloud now, we can download them to CS7. And it just makes it easier for them to do the research and they'll shoot me a snapshot of what they're looking for, and then I can purchase the pattern and upload it, and I'm ready to go. Uh, there was a question a little earlier about bobbin thread. I use the same thread in the bobbin as I do in the top. And I do too, but I, again, I use the isocord thread, top and bottom. I know some people will switch, and there's a lot of questions on tension and um, other things that do, do arise, and there's different products out there, but I don't have any problem, so it's hard for me to relate sometimes to some of the other issues because I, I'm basic, I do edge to edge, and that's kind of where I'm at. When you, once you get into custom and you're changing fabrics and you're using designer um, fabrics and you're using thin cottons and heavier weights and leathers and things like that, you may need to change and switch up what you're doing. This is what works for me in my process. We did have a question a little earlier about how to determine the price for a quilt. How do we come up with the $450 for the smallish quilt? Well, I kind of backtracked it from a, a size of a quilt, and I backtracked how much it would cost to have it quilted for a basic edge-to-edge, -edge, and then I backtrack um, how much it would cost to bind it, how much the backing cost would be, how much my interfacing would be, and then I kind of have a starting price from there. So I think a lot, when I originally did it, I was at about $200 just on cost of fabric alone because you have your batting as well. And I figured that I probably put in probably a good 20 hours piecing the top. By the time you're cutting the t-shirts, you're ironing the stabilizer on it, you're recutting them, you're designing on the wall, and then you go from there. So there is a lot of design time in what we do. Now, I, again, I realize there are some people out there that do only just 12 inch squares, boom, 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 it's a little bit of sashing, and they're done. And there's nothing wrong with that, but ours are very personalized and very, this is like an artist canvas. We spend a lot of time designing and meeting with the customer themselves. They come in and they review it. Do they want it here? Do they want it there? So you could spend a lot of time um, on consultation as well. When quilting the quilt, do you use the E to E function or repeat patterns? I use E to E because I let the, um, let the computer do all the math. And I set it up and I can go back in and I can fix whatever I need to. I will sometimes get out of edge to edge while I'm quilting because I'm relocating or if there's a quilt, a block that I have to go around, I might have to change some different functions. But I usually start with E to E. Our names in the shop name are? Oh, I'm Holly. My husband and I, Farley, and I own Coyote Creek Gamble. And my lovely assistant behind you, <laughs> which you can't see, but <laughs> is Vicki. So we are here. At, uh, usually we're open on Tuesday nights and we're open on Saturdays. But I did want to talk about, because it is graduation, and you have your Gamble machine, and some of you, you may not, but it's always a good time to think about how you can graduate with your machine. Now you can see our lovely little hostess over here, Heidi Ivy, is a proud graduate of the Gamble classes. She's been busy taking her classes online and studying, so she now feels to be a confident quilter, and she's going to graduate and move on and do some things with her Gamble. There are things you can do to upgrade your Gamble. If you have just a basic machine, you can upgrade to a Elevate, which is a touchscreen tablet. 
You can upgrade to a Statler, which you, gives you the capacity of using your monitor and your keyboard. Um, you can upgrade your wheels, put new wheels on your machine. Um, there's a few different things that you can always upgrade and graduate to doing more with your machine. Now we have a new vivid lighting system as well that is great for doing some different um, lighting. And so much depends on where you're located and what your studio situation is. We have pretty good lighting in here on a regular basis and we do have the overhead light bar on both of our machines, which we love. So that gives us a lot of light, but the vivid light bar fits under your machine and it does, we do not have it yet on our machines, but it does fit under here. So you can always upgrade your light bar if you have trouble seeing. And so many, again, people quilt in their basement or their attic or in their sunroom. So you have to do what's right for your own situation. Cheryl says she's getting her new machine with a Statler on Monday. Oh, awesome, awesome. Where is Cheryl located? Does she, Cheryl reply? She will. Give her time. Okay. That's awesome. I tell you, the other day, we have been quilting, and I have so many pictures to post of quilts I've been busy quilting, and I go home every day, and it's like, I love my Statler. My husband's just like, what? I love my Statler. I tell him I, I love my Statler probably more than I tell him I love him. <laughs> Do you know anything about the new foot sets? Um, are you talking about the, the spoon feet and the yes? When, when they might be ready? I'm sorry, we do not have information on that. That is something that um, Gamble will release as soon as we have information. I will tell you that this machine does have the spoon foot on it, and Vicki does like it. She loves it. Um, I was um, being a good dealer, and I sold my set and did not get a replacement set, but I quilt a lot of things without it. So I do not ha use it on my t-shirt quilts. So don't feel like you cannot do other things because you don't have the spoon foot. Cheryl's from Anthony, Texas. Oh, awesome. Tell, tell Corey I said hey. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> so, um, but can't, take inspiration from the t-shirts you get. There's a lot of things on Pinterest that will spark your ideas. There's books out there. There just really are no rules. There's lots of different designs and ways that you can enhance your quilting just by using your imagination. And again, we do here at Gamble, we're here to help you and support you. And we appreciate you taking the time to do these videos with us. We're gonna be continuing to do them at three o'clock every day. Um, it's a lot of fun seeing the different people um, stepping up and doing it. It was great to see Paula Mildred the other day, so maybe I'll see you again sometime. If you have any questions about any type of graduation for your machine, any upgrades, feel free to reach out to your dealer. You all have your own dealer for your area, and they will be glad to help you. So, any other questions? Okay, Vicki's giving me wild eyes. <laughs> So I guess not. So uh, thanks again for joining us. This is Holly by Golly in Pier coming at you live. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.